I don't even know what to say. What? You you know what we're gonna you know what we're gonna start with. You know what we're gonna start with, right? Yeah, it's gonna be the thumbnail tonight too. I, I guarantee you. And, and I, I I gotta tell you, I'm beyond disappointed. I, I don't think I don't think anything could have prepared me for what happened tonight. Thirty one point spread. You had a backup in. You know, Kansas was debating. You know. Who to start? They they started Jalen Daniels. They, he was the backup Kansas quarterback, and you lose in overtime, 57 to 56, to Kansas for the second time in less than a decade. Sark, I know you're a middling coach with a great offensive mind, but this this is unacceptable, unacceptable. Unacceptable. You you don't you don't lose games to Kansas. Keep in mind that you know a little bit after you know I got none watching Kansas get you know get the victory with a, a unbelievable pass to Jared Casey by the way the fullback who was a walk on at Kansas which was very surprising to me. You know after after the Horns lose in football the Horns got blasted by Gonzaga in basketball but that I'll save basketball talk for another day um, again this is just unbelievable stuff you know Kansas has really nothing to play for but Lance Depot you know is just you know he, he, I mean that that's that's insanity I mean they played Oklahoma close a few weeks back and, and this is the type of results that Kansas is getting like they don't. They might have that five-star culture. They might have that five-star culture, like Iowa State. But um, Iowa State lost a 62-yard field goal, which is hilarious. So you know, it is what it is. There in the wacky, wild world of the middle to lower tier in the Big 12. We'll talk about the rest of the Big 12 in a minute when we get to the other big games here. Um, just to go over some other stuff, you know, real quick. Congrats to Incarnate Word. Even though I've heard that your facilities are not great, you're going to the WAC. Southland gets the gets the um, McNeese gets the Gonzaga treatment in the Southland. You know they get a lot of their tournaments and stuff like that. The all the basketball tournaments, soccer tournaments, whatever. You know they get the Gonzaga treatment to stay in the Southland. McNeese does. UIW said, "No, nah, we not we not a part of this no more." So they went off and said, "We're going to the WAC." So the WAC should be fine in football. They're probably not going to move up to FBS now. I think, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, for the WAC, you know, because I mean they got they had a solid footing, but when you lose New Mexico State and Sam Houston State, it is what it is there. Um, but speaking of more FCS, you know, nonsense, we have another FCS over FBS upset, and this time it's UMass. It's UMass again. I know, right? They got blown out by Maine, who was sub 500. They they're not even they're not even 500. That's pitiful, UMass. Two straight FCS blowouts. Pitiful. Florida's, you know, Florida's lucky. They did become the 13th victim. I believe that I believe this is the 12th team, or rather the 12th FCS over FBS upset this year, which is like the most in a long time. Florida could have been that 13th, you know, victim. You know, they gave up 52 points to Sanford. Todd Grantham, he, he's not he's not that guy. He's not that guy on defense. I think I've been saying I think I've been saying it. He's one of those guys that's just not it on defense. Get him out of there. You don't give up 52 points to Sanford like that. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, that that was that was about it for all that stuff, you know. So why don't we get into Thursday and Friday night. Thursday night was an interesting one. North Carolina and Pitt. North Carolina just coming off of that big victory versus Wake Forest. How are they going to do against Pitt? You know, you got Kenny Pickett. You got the Panthers. They're riding high. They got a lot of momentum. Well, Pickett and those Panthers, they were able to overcome another for, uh, another Tar Heel surge late. I mean, again, Cortos like came back like several times. 
we, we had, you know, it was a rainy, it started to get real rainy late, and, you know, I mean, again, Pitt didn't have a good second half. They had less than 100 yards in the second half. I mean, multiple missed kicks, too. There were multiple missed field goals and extra points, I mean, in this game. A tip pass that went the UNC, you know, went their way for an interception. I mean, I'm, but I'm definitely very much impressed by this pit defense. They they technically lead the FBS in sacks, and they were all over Sam Howell. They, they roughed that man up the entire game, roughed him up. And on Friday night, four turnovers again forced by the Cincinnati Bearcats defense. They allowed less than 50 yards of offense by the time we got to the second half. But again, South Florida isn't, you know, they weren't easy to put away. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, since he had three bad turnovers on their own that helped out in South Florida. I mean, the game was pretty much over um, once it, we got up to like 31-7. to But, I mean, USF, again, they battled back, made the game a little bit closer than what it needed to be. And that might hurt Cincinnati a little bit. I mean, again, number five right now, they could drop, you know, a little bit based on what has happened today and leading into tonight. And, you know, things could go a little bit differently for them. Okay. So why don't we get into the noon Eastern slate, and let's just start with something simple. North, not North, New Mexico State. And Alabama, how about New Mexico State? They scored three points, got the lead on Alabama, and then got destroyed after that. 59 straight, Bryce Young, 13 straight completions at one point. You know, Bama dominated. How about Penn State, Michigan? This was a sloppy, sloppy game. Lots of fake field goals. In fact, this is like at least two by Penn State. Just two terrible fake field goals that you don't need to do. You don't need to do fake field goals when you're trying to upset a top 10 team. And that and that's exactly what Penn State did. Just horrible, horrible coaching decisions. Again, I don't know what's wrong with these coaches. These college coaches just don't be making any sense. You know, be smart. You know, take the points when you need to take the points. You know, Kate McNair, you know, he did well. Three TD passes. Wolverines defense, of course, you know, was on point. Stopping Penn State on multiple occasions, you know, and I mean they they they, they did they did their work. Michigan did their work. They got another big victory. You know, this is going to be good good points for them to stay where they rightfully are. And number six could even move up at this point. So now we get to the big one, the big noon. Oh yes, big noon kickoff, Oklahoma and Baylor. How was this game going to go for Oklahoma? Was Oklahoma going to, you know, come out fresh from the bye week and dominate? Or was Baylor going to pull the upset? And you already know what happened. Baylor didn't pull off an upset. They pulled off what we've been expecting for so long now. And that was dominating Baylor, you know, or rather dominating Oklahoma. Baylor dominating Oklahoma with its defense. I mean, Caleb Williams looked so flustered out there. He could not get anything going. I think he hurt himself at one point. I think he hurt one of his hands at one point. He even got he even got put out the game for Spencer Rattler. Spencer Rattler came back in in the third quarter, could do nothing. And Oklahoma, Oklahoma, you know that defense it was not it was not there. If it weren't for Baylor messing it up multiple times, I mean they missed multiple kicks. I mean in this game, Gary Bohannon. You know, had 100 yards rushing, 100 yards passing as well. I mean, this was just a clinic that should have been, this should have been a clinic by Baylor, similar to the clinic they put up years ago, a couple years back when they blew that lead, you know, a couple years back in 2019, you know, when Baylor had that 28-3 lead, y'all remember that? Yeah, but this, this right here was a domination, a statement by Baylor. They're still in the Big 12 hunt. They still have a huge, huge shot at getting in. They're going to need a little bit of help, Baylor does, for the time being. Um, but it won't be too much help. It looks like the only thing that Baylor needs is another Oklahoma loss. And that's very simple. Baylor can just win the rest of their games. That's also That also should be simple. But you never know when it comes to the Big 12 football. You never know. And again, Baylor did get stunned by TCU last uh, two weeks ago, 
Well, you're at it. Yeah, that was last week. Excuse me, my bad. I'm messing up on my numbers. I'm messing up on my weeks. Um, but yeah, Oklahoma, on the other hand, their 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 college football playoff hopes. They were ranked at number eight for a reason. They didn't look good all season. They did not look good again today. They uh, their their college football playoff hopes are dying. Their Big Twelve title hopes could die as well if they mess around and find out. They mess around and find out these final two games. Iowa State, you know, despite the fact they lost to Texas Tech, they're not no slouch. Oklahoma State, not no slouch. We'll talk about Oklahoma State in a minute here. Um, so this is gonna be this is gonna be huge for Oklahoma these next two weeks. It's gonna be huge if they want to stay alive in both the CFP and the Big Twelve. Mississippi State and Auburn. How was that game going to go? You think that Auburn was going to be, you know, the team that could play spoiler to Alabama, but you can't give up a twenty. You can't do an Atlanta Falcons twenty-eight to three lead, and you give up forty unanswered. Will Rogers had six touchdowns in this game. Six. Mississippi State with another huge victory against the top 20 team. They keep doing it. I don't know why they keep doing it, but they keep doing it. Mississippi State is that team. They're, I think they're bowl eligible now. Good, good on them. Um, how about Northwestern and Wisconsin? Once again, you know, Wisconsin again. I don't, I don't know what this team has been on. I don't know what kind of, I don't know what kind of food they've been feeding them up there in Wisconsin. You know, you know it's probably that big boy, that corn-fed food. You know it's probably that. That huge, that huge amount of food they be getting up there in Wisconsin. I mean, they picked off these these Wildcat quarterbacks four times, balanced attack on offense. You know, I'm, again, I'm just continuing to be surprised by the progression of Graham Mertz this year. The way things have gone for him in the in the first half of the season was not great, but the second half of the season he's been lighting up. Wisconsin has won what six straight now. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. They pummel the Wildcats, keep that Big Ten West lead, and you know they they have an inside track. They have two games left to go, and things are looking pretty for the Badgers. How about Utah and Arizona? You know it was a little bit closer than expected. I think this game was. You know T.J. Pledger had two touchdowns. Cam Rising with two touchdown passes, and I mean Utah was able to hold off Arizona. But that that was about it. They held them off, you know. Again, a lot closer than this score indicated, you know, or rather, a lot closer than it should have been. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, as we get into the 3:30 Eastern slate, 2:30 Central time, why don't we talk about the number one team in the country real quick? You know the vibes. Defense dominated again. I mean, Tennessee took the lead early. They were up, what, 10-7 to early at one point. And, you know, they got the touchdown first, too. And, you know, once Hendon Hooker got harassed by the Georgia defense, it was over. It was over. At Georgia, they they go, they gone perfect in the SEC East. So now they got two games left, Georgia does. You know, one against Charleston Southern and the other against their hated rival Georgia Tech. And, I mean, Georgia's going to, they, they could just cakewalk into the SEC championship but just like that. They, they probably are, but, I mean, just like that, you know, you never thought, you never thought the way that offense is. I mean, it's just a, not a good offense. I mean, Stetson Bennett's still out there, you know, leading the charge, but it is what it is there. Purdue, Ohio State, I thought this game was going to be a lot, you know, more competitive. But, I mean, you know, Purdue still threw for nearly 400 yards. They, they, they still put up 31 points. But when C.J. Stroud picks apart the Boilermaker defense, five touchdowns for him. Travion Henderson got two on the ground. I mean, you know, it was a recipe for disaster for the Boilermakers, and they are no longer Spoilermakers. They're going to probably drop right back out of the top 25 as they should. Um, you know, it is what it is there. 59-31 there. Minnesota-Iowa was a game I caught mostly in the second half. Alex Padilla may be the answer the Hawkeyes needed because this dude threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. 
And I mean, the Iowa defense was able to stop the Gophers when it mattered. Now, we're talking, the Gophers had a couple of big opportunities late to get some momentum, get get a touchdown late, you know, get something going late because I mean they were they were only down by two late, and I mean just just some poor poor play calls late, you know, by PJ Flex, just some poor poor play from Tanner Morgan late. I mean Minnesota, you know they. They had all that momentum, and they've squandered it in the past couple weeks. They've squandered it so bad. How about Maryland and Michigan State? Well, Peyton Thorne, that guy, that guy is back into his, his form because, I mean, he threw for four huge touchdowns, four huge TDs. Kenneth Walker added another two TDs to his impressive resume, 140-plus yards on the ground. I think it was like 143, if I'm not mistaken. And the Spartans... They're riding pretty high. Showdown with Ohio State next week. We'll talk about that one. That's going to be a big one right there. Big game next week. Southern Miss and UTSA. How about those road runners? They keep on winning. Stronger second half than it was in the first half. Um, you know, it was a lot closer than the score indicated, but you know, physical defense was able to do it just enough to keep Southern Miss away. So the UTSA Roadrunners, they keep on churning, keep on churning with that undefeated season they got. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting to see what, you know, the, um, what, what everything's going on in CUSA because I believe there's a big showdown next week for UTSA, UAB. I believe that's what's happening. We'll see what UTSA can do. We'll talk about, you know, obviously we'll talk about all the big matchups next week. So we move in. To the seven Eastern slates, and my goodness, A and M, you blew it. You blew your SEC title hopes just like that. How do you do that? You, you let Ely run for 150 yards. You know, I mean, Matt Corral didn't really do too much. He did just enough. But I mean, if you have Zach Calzada regressing to early season Zach Calzada throwing two bad interceptions, the Ole Miss defense just suffocating the Aggies. I mean, they suffocated him. I mean, at least Akne got 100 yards, 110, I believe. But I mean, again, Ole Miss, that defense really has stepped up at times this year. And this was another example of Jim just stepping up when they needed to. Just stepped up and did the work they needed to do. Again, Ole Miss probably should have won this game by more because, again, this is Lane Kiffin we're talking about here. But now, since A&M blew it, maybe Ole Miss has a shot at it, at breaching the SEC championship. But it's, they're going to need a lot of help, though. They're going to need Alabama to lose twice. And I don't know if that's going to happen. It might, but I don't know if it will. We'll see. We still got two weeks left. In the, in the regular season before conference championships. Another big one, NC State, Wake Forest, top 20 matchup that probably should have been on ABC, but it wasn't because you got to get that Notre Dame money. Speaking of Notre Dame, real quick, Notre Dame dominated Virginia. No Brendan Armstrong. They had a backup in. Virginia did. I mean, I mean Notre Dame just, they had 400 yards of total offense. Pummeled Virginia. Pummeled. I mean, my goodness, Notre Dame, you didn't have to do that to him. You didn't have to do that to him, but you did it to him. My goodness. Um, TCU, Oklahoma State, too. We'll touch on that real quick. Um, Oklahoma State, they sent TCU back to where they were on, on their faces. Because, I mean, my goodness, 448 rushing yards. Dominic Richardson, Jalen Warren, running for 200-plus on their own. My goodness. My goodness, Oklahoma State, you didn't have to do that to them. You did not have to do that to them. And Arkansas LSU, I'll just say this, this was a defensive struggle. A really, really close, ugly game. But Arkansas, you got the victory. You got the victory in overtime. Good for you. You're not in the basement. LSU is in the SEC West. That's good. That's good stuff. But anyway, NC State, Wake Forest. Um, this was a game where there was a lot of turnovers. You got a kick return TD in this game by NC State. Um, two, I mean, kick return TD. And you got Devin Leary and Sam Hartman duking it out. You know, in this game, both these guys were just throwing. I mean, they were throwing it all over the field. I mean, 
you know, again, a lot of turnovers. You know, both these quarterbacks had five interceptions combined. You know, and I mean, this is it was it was a it was crazy, crazy game, crazy game. But Wake Forest did just a little bit more in the end. When you put on when you put out a long drive like that, and you 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 muscle your way into the end zone and get that you know ten point lead because they were up forty five through thirty five before NC State decided to put in the garbage time TD late. I mean NC State showed you know that they were not the team. They were not that team. You know, and Wake Forest on the other hand. They show that they are that team. They really are that team because, I mean, again, you know, they've been criticized for their defense. I mean, they still gave up 35 points, but, I mean, this this Wake Forest team, they, they got a lot of heart. They got a lot of heart. They got a lot of toughness in them. And now Wake Forest, they got, they, they got the ACC Atlantic pretty much wrapped up. They just need a couple more things to fall their way. Beating Clemson next week will do that. You know, that will pretty much do it if they can do it. And they just got to clinch it next week. That's all they got to do. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Now let's move on to these last two games here as Washington State and Oregon was a game that happened. There was a bad fumble that probably wasn't a fumble. Again, the camera angles by ESPN were pretty freaking bad. But you, know, but you know what? It didn't matter. That that didn't matter. When you got Cardwell, Die, and Anthony Brown running all over this Wazoo defense, I mean, they they just took the Oregon took care of business in this game. That's all I can say. They took care of business. Very simple. And in the other late game, Nevada and San Diego State for the control of the Mountain West Conference West Division. Carson Strong, he had a great game. 350 passing, three TDs. But again, you know, Matt Arazia and, and the San Diego State team was able to do just enough. I mean, the defense came through in the clutch yet again for San Diego State. Lake field goal by Arazio. And I mean, boom, there it was. San Diego State now have control of the Mountain West Western Division. And you might have a good shot at hosting the Mountain West Championship on the 7th the 4th. So there you go. That that That's it. That's it. That's all the games. Because, I mean, there, there's not, there wasn't too much more to speak about. So, yeah. Next week, we have the final week of the FCS regular season. We have two weeks left to go in the FBS regular season with more huge matchups from the top 25 in, you know, in the FBS, you know, division of college football. We'll be breaking down, you know, everything, breaking down it all for you next week. You know, we'll get the video uh, out on, what, Monday or Tuesday? Usually, I think it's Tuesday, like I always do. You know it's probably going to be Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, that that's that's it. That's it, everybody. That's all I got to say, in all honesty. You know, I'm still going to be uh, I'm still gonna be upset for a little while because, again, Texas lost to Kansas again. But the second time in like five years. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed your college football Saturday. I cannot wait to start it up again. I'm not sure when though. You know, the rankings come out Tuesday night, and I'm not sure who's going to be ranked. I know there's going to be some teams that shouldn't be, that might be. But I mean, I don't know. But again, I'll see you all again very, very soon. You know, NFL recap probably coming. You know, Monday college put I mean not college football, college basketball. I'll be doing some notes for that and getting ready for the second week of college basketball. And we'll just keep on rolling here. So hope y'all have a good evening, good rest of your weekend. I will see you all again very soon. Good night everybody.